200, almost quarter of a million per week I'm earning. Now this is beauty, my friends. This is peak capitalism. Hey, I'm Feedback Gaming, and this is City Skylines Campus. I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to make this video on City Skylines Campus, which is the new expansion for City Skylines. If you want to check out this game, the link is in the description below. And this game is available right now. I've never played City Skylines before, but I presume it's something about building a city in the sky. That's my best guess. Let's see if I'm right. Also, I want a challenge. So let's turn on hard mode. My understanding is this makes the maintenance cost for everything go up. And we are going to sort these by name. These are the new maps in the new expansion. We're going to go for Rosslyn Peninsula. It should be a good challenge. Let's go. And this is what we've got to work with. Beautiful. Mountains, coastline, rivers. Beautiful. Now, building a city is okay, but we need a long-term objective. We need an end game. And our end game is to be a capitalist pig. We are going to privatize everything, and we're going to do everything to make the most possible money possible. And if that means cutting a lot of corners, which we will, by the way. And I bet you're also thinking, this expansion pack is about education. How are you going to do education and make it profitable? Well, we have the beauty of tuition fees. And we can turn our education system into a for-profit education platform. It will require a large amount of investment to get the university going, but then we're going to make in some whew, top dollar. With every game of City Skylines, starts with a single piece of road. Voila. So let's talk about cutting corners. First of all, taxes. Budget. Yep, yeah, that goes all the way to the bottom. As time goes on, we will try and go for the most optimum of 100% for water electricity, because that way we can get the good balance between the cost of the buildings and the output of water and electricity. But for now, 50%. When it comes down to water, it's pretty simple. We have the option between water towers, which have a higher upkeep, or we pump it out, which has a lower upkeep. It goes without saying, we're going to pump it right here. And we're going to dump it just a little bit upstream. At the moment, we're not pumping and dumping that much. So we can keep these relatively close together until we start pumping out a lot of sludge. And that way we can start pumping the pumps closer to the ocean. This is the part where you expect me to role play as a filthy capitalist. And you would expect me to go for the power option that gives the most pollution, right? Wrong. We are going to go for wind turbines. And you ask, why? The reason is, is their upkeep cost versus per megawatt hour output is better than coal. The goal of this is to have less upkeep costs, which results in more cash in the long term. We're looking into the future. And of course, wind turbines need to be placed in areas where we can get 8 megawatts per hour. Otherwise, it's not worth the investment. As you can see here, 3, 6, 7. No, that won't do. But here, 8 megawatts. Boom. Let's keep this simple for now. So we're going to build a one-way road in and a one-way road out. And then we are going to move this over here and place residential. And you're probably thinking, Dave, are you a madman? Why are you just placing residential without all the roads connected? Well, this is cheaper. Less road maintenance overall, resulting in more money for me. We're going to think about long-term traffic with this as well. So what we're going to do is place a single road here. Go in this direction. And we are also going to build our industry in the forestry area. Because this is going to be specialized, forestry-based industry. Which ends up making more profit. But ends up consuming more water, if I'm correct. And we'll buy our commercial right underneath it. Now that probably looks awful to most people. And I agree it is awful. But that is extremely cost-efficient. Pipe here and here. And then pipe here. Then here. Now we watch the citizens arrive to the city which has the lowest standard of living in the entirety of human history. We have run into our first problem. Boom, we're not making enough electricity. We need more megawatt hour output. So, easy thing we do, it was just increase the budget. There we go. And now we are making enough fuel. Easy. And there we go, we're in the green and we are now making profit with our beautiful little hamlet. Of course, always looking to minimize the amount of road that I build. Road is very expensive, not only to place, but also for the maintenance costs. So reduce that amount of road is going to go a long, long way. 
we've leveled up. Now, this is important because taxes have now become unlocked. And of course, we are pretty mean when it comes down to our taxes. That's right, 29% for everything. There we go. And now we bring in a lot of money. A lot of money. So you're probably thinking right now, wow, that tax rate is ridiculous, Dave. How are people going to hang around? How are they going to even gonna afford to live in your city with that ridiculous tax rate? Well, this is how we're going to do it. They are going to basically empty all of their bank accounts to us. We're going to be phenomenally rich for a very brief amount of time. And then they start to complain that their taxes are too high. Like here. You are unhappy, you say? That's right, you're unhappy. Because you are, your bank account is being emptied to me. So this is how it's going to work. We increase the tax rate to the highest possible amount, as you can see right here. And then we wait for these icons to turn red. Well, that basically means it's about to be an abandoned building. They're about to leave the city. And in that case, we drop the tax rate. But as you can probably see, we're making a ridiculous amount of money just fleecing them from tax. And believe me, guys, we're going to be exercising this through the entirety of the game. Okay, now we're going to put the tax rate down to 60% for commercial, residential, and industrial. This should hopefully remove the bubbles. 15%? 14%? 14%. Okay, there we go. We only want to deal with the utilities until we actually get a real problem that we can't choose to ignore. And in this case, rubbish. Rubbish has piled up. Rubbish. In this case, we are going to build a landfill site. Right there. And of course, as well, the budget for this is going to be the bare minimum. There we go. It goes without saying, but once you have power issues once again, don't increase your budget to 150%. It's not worth it. It's overall just better to place more wind turbines. There we go. And once again, they're asking for hospitals, uh, police departments, fire brigades, and education. This can all be dealt by the private sector. Just to clarify something I said before, I said that forestry industry increases the consumption of water. It's not. That's actually farming. It increases the consumption of electricity. This is one of the few issues we can't turn a blind eye towards. We have to deal with this. So, let's place this police station right here. Okay, we're having a little problem with the water right now. And you're probably thinking, oh, let's place another pump. Nope, it's because the budget's really low. So let's drop that to 64% for both. And that should be enough. There we go. At this point, you're probably thinking, oh, Dave, you need to expand the roads here. Because, I mean, you're not going to have to fit any more residential here. Nope. There we go. Remember, if you're able to place more zoning without placing extra roads, that means you don't have to pay for any of the maintenance of the roads. So reducing the amount of roads is to your benefit. And that means we can make more money. Oh boy, we have a fire problem. Once again, another one of those utilities we cannot choose to ignore. So let's place a fire station right here. The beauty of fire services is as well is there's no need to keep the building turned on when there's no fires. Okay, so I'll admit it does reduce the chance of new fires occurring in an area of effect, but for the most part, the chance of the fires happening, even without a fire station, is still pretty low. So in this case, we're gonna cut corners again and turn that fire station off. Okay, time for a slight upgrade for our energy output. We can now go for the advanced wind turbine. This results in the same output for cost per megawatt hour but the initial investment is less so this goes here for a total of 20 megawatt hours there we go it's reached the point where we have another utility that we can choose not to ignore and it is death care so we are going to plop a cemetery right there a comment i'm probably going to get about this is you're probably going to say dave one this isn't pretty listen Capitalism isn't pretty, okay? It's about making money. And two, this isn't very efficient. Utility trucks and vehicles have to go up here and then go all the way back. This isn't a very efficient route. Once again, this isn't about efficiency. This is about making the most profit. What don't you understand? We have another problem that's arisen that we have to deal with, and it is prime. So we are going to have to up our budget ever so slightly for the police. You're probably looking at this right now and you're like, I don't know, it's probably giving you heart palpitations. But you know what, man? We're earning 5000 per week. So, what do I care? N not a lot. 
a little bit. At this point, you can start tweaking things just to get the most optimal output of everything. So right now, having a little bit of problem with rubbish and death care is looking a little bit of a concern as well. In that case, we're going to tweak a few things to make sure they're more optimal. 80% for health, and we more than likely have to drop a recycling center or another landfill. We'll drop a recycling center. Right there. Also having a little issue with traffic, so we're going to do a little bit of traffic management. This will involve polishing of this. And sticking in a trusty roundabout. Right about there. And there we go. It's not beautiful, but it does the job. Hey! It's trivia time! What is the largest city in the world by population? What? is the largest city in the world by population. If you know, comment below. There's a magical tool in this game that serves all needs of all people, and it is cost B, the bulldozer. It fixes health problems, clears out the dead, it also clears up rubbish, and it also is a way of dealing with criminals. State mandated bulldozers. Another question that you guys are probably asking is how is your city sustainable with no education? Well, the industry that I'm building and the commercial is all low density, so it only requires uneducated workers for all of them. And also, the generic industry we go for will not be promoted. So in that case, we will only use uneducated. We're a big town now. And that is an important milestone, because now we can have high-density residential. And I'm going to be pretty aggressive about this, because all of this now is pretty worthless. High-density is the future. There we go. Just be aware that high-density commercial and offices require more educated citizens. So you can't get away with placing these unless you go for education, which we will go for soon i'm feeling a little bit nervous by the look of my city right now i certainly have no icons to say that there are no problems throughout the entirety of my city you know what that makes me think that makes me think my budget for my utilities is too high <laughs> if there's money to be made okay i don't like the look of this you know what small houses i don't want them high density is the future once again, if there's no downside, there's no point in me building small houses. Population, almost 14,000. Earning 5,000 per week. This is a point where we can start thinking about education, okay? And we are going to build a beautiful campus here. And educate the people. Yes, purchase. That's the one. Build a road across the here. Right there. This is going to be our campus right here. You've got three kinds of campuses you can build. You have a trade school, you have a liberal arts college, and you have a university. We are going to go for a university. But unfortunately, we can't do that because we like the population. But this is where the campus is going to be. It's pretty huge. So let's work on education. First of all, elementary schools. One. Two. Three. Four. High schools. One. Two. Three. Budget for education. 150%. We're not going to mess around. And these schools are going to fill up pretty quickly. So we've reached a bottleneck now when it comes down to industry. Right now, we can't get enough workers to fill out these jobs. And the reason we can't fill out these jobs is because there's not a lack of demand for uh, these services. So we can't sell enough. So the only thing we can do right now is to educate workers to work on different products and services that we can sell. Therefore, attract more residents. Therefore, increase our overall population. That is what we're doing right here. Education, 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 education. How's the progress going? 89% of our citizens are uneducated. 11% are educated. Once they go to high school, they'll become well-educated. We need to get at least 10% well-educated. Then we can start thinking about building that university and expanding from there. So this is the maximum capacity of uneducated workers for the entirety of the city. 15 
thousand. It's not too bad because you can still make a healthy amount of money from this. But the downside is you're not going to increase your population anymore at this point unless you choose to invest in education. Don't forget to increase your taxes for high density and offices. Having a little bit of a water problem right now. And that's because right now we are currently pumping sand. Single toilet flush results in a mass of sand. It's so beautiful, the video. Oh, what a beautiful stream. Just pumping directly from the mountain, coming down. Uh, not too sure about that pumping location, but then we go down here and then we go... Oh boy. This is some, uh... This is some pretty hardcore pumping. A bunch of fun things we can buy right now. So first of all, we can build a baseball stadium. And that is awesome. Because that can be used in conjunction with our campus to make our campus more attractive as time goes on. We've gained solar. Now solar is awesome because its cost per megawatt hour is very, very low. The initial investment is quite high, but overall we're looking for long-term investment. So therefore keeping those costs nice and low is ideal. We're really overproducing electricity right now. So what we can do is drop the budget for electricity. It is time for education. The university campus has been unlocked. Let's go. So first of all, we need to draw out the campus area. So we're going to select a paint canvas. Yes, this is pretty big, but there's a lot of buildings we can build inside here. So we want to make this the most pristine university in the entire nation. You know what? World. Let's take it one step further. First of all, you've got to build an administrative building. In this case, for the university, it is a university administrative building. So it's pretty much the entrance. Next up, we've got to build a roads into the campus. But first up, we're just going to build roads directly through the center. And then we can build roads off that. Perfect. Then we can do some lovely oval shapes. Beautiful. Okay, let's put some buildings down. So we need somewhere for our students to be. So we're going to build dormitories here and here. Also, we've got uh, a study hall. We'll pop one of those right there. We also have a school of law. We also have university housekeeping, which we'll pop one there and pop one there. As our school gains more and more prestige through campus attractiveness, more students and academic works, we will upgrade from unrecognized to eventually to prestigious, which is the final one there. So also now, this baseball stadium is connected to the campus. So what we can do now is change the identity to the Chirpers? No. Eagles? No. Lions? The Spartans. And it has to be feedback blue, obviously. So brief overview how it works. A campus has five levels, from unrecognized to prestigious. And each event of year, if you meet the requirements, your campus will level up. We're meeting the student requirement and the campus attractiveness, but academic works is a bit of a work in progress. Now, what is an academic work? An academic work is some kind of breakthrough that happens at your university that makes your university unique from all the others around the world, country, place. Uh, there's two ways you can get academic work. You can invest money directly into your academic staff up to a maximum of 20,000 a year, and that increases the percentage chance of an academic work happening or in my opinion the easier way of doing it is just to invest 50,000 directly into the university in this case we're going to go for a scientific study boom way and this is the end of the academic year we have got three academic works from this year i don't know how we managed to get three maybe the chance of getting more than one is is high i actually don't know uh students 2000 yay Campus of Triton is 315, and we have leveled up from unrecognized to recognized. That means we are actually on the map. People even know we exist. We have now unlocked a cafeteria, a fountain, a gymnasium, and an outdoor study. And these are the academic works that we've unlocked. Wow, amazing technology. Now we meet the requirements for attractiveness and the level of students. We just need an academic work, which is easy. I've just spotted on this beach, there's pillboxes, bunkers, trenches. Is this a sign? Is it? Does Skylines know that I'm betraying Hearts of Iron 4? All right, I'm gonna make a slight adjustment to my university campus. We're gonna erase this. Erase this. Just make it slightly more presentable. Just a little bit, not a massive amount. There we go. A few trees, little plazas, nice little entrance. Very pretty. The next year's up. Plus three academic works. We've lost about a thousand students. 
and the attractiveness has gone up as well. We now gone from recognized to renowned. So you can see where I'm going with this. The more prestigious our university becomes, the more we can charge per student. And we've unlocked a bunch of buildings. And we're like, oh, wow, we've invented the light bulb. Wow. All right, what do we need this year? We need more attractiveness. We need more students. And we need more academic work. So one way of increasing campus attractiveness is sports. In this case, we're going to increase cheerleading, which is just a flat increase of attractiveness for the campus. And we're also going to go for coaching investment, which is increasing chances of winning, which results in more attractiveness. Also, another good way of increasing campus attractiveness is just to slap down a bunch of statues. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow. Now we're meeting the requirement. If you thought these rectangles were awful, have a look at this. Look at these. Oh my goodness, how awful are these offices? I'll be honest with you guys, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Another academic year is over. We've gone from renowned to acclaimed. It means we are one away from prestigious. Yeah, one more away. We need, oof, we need a total of 16 academic works, 1,800 students, and attracting us to 1,800. We are really far away from that one and that one. Oh no. Groundskeeping's on fire. I feel like I'm getting flashbacks to a Simpsons episode. When I said this was a big investment to eventually make money out of this, oof, I wasn't kidding. Okay, pro tip. I've noticed I get a lot more students when I go for the policy of education boost, which encourages young adults to go into education. And there we go. Campus attractiveness, all good to become a prestigious school. We have gone from acclaimed to prestigious. 17 academic works, 3,427 students, and a campus attractive rating of 2,125. Prestigious. Beautiful. And there you go. There's the complete university. I must admit, I may have made it just slightly too big a little bit but here we go boys how much money can we make from this so first of all let's stop subsidizing our sports let's stop subsidizing cheerleaders and coaching let's whack that ticket price up all the way we're not going to invest any money into academic works take off all of those we don't need any of those actually no sponsorship deals will keep that because that decreases the cost of uh, sports and then we go into policies and we go for for profit education. Building upkeep minus 50%, but this reduces citizens' happiness. Boom, here we go. Now we are making a lot of money from education. I'll admit, we've invested almost like 2 million into education. So it's going to take a very long time to get this money back. But as you can see, there's a lot of money in education if you get a prestigious school. 72,000 were earning from tuition fees with expenses of 40,000. That's a healthy profit. Wow. Leave campsites and tree houses immediately. In other news, we have a forest fire that consists of this single tree. The whole point of this was to see how much money we could make if we played it in the most capitalistic sense. Now, we could sit on this campus right now and make a lot of money just from student tuition fees. But let's see how much money we can potentially make in total. Education, all the way down. Every budget to zero. And everything else dropped to zero. Yeah, that's good. All right, perfect. And we uh, drop the education boost as well. And everything else is good. And finally, this is it. We're going to increase the taxes. Okay, and this is the final thing. 29% for all taxes. And here we go. Earnings. 111. 123,000. 135,000. <laughs> oh no, they're getting upset. 200, almost quarter of a million per week I'm earning. Now this is beauty, my friends. This is peak capitalism. There you go, 260,000, 263,000 was the maximum we could earn there. And that is pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget, if you don't hit that subscription button, your subscription means absolutely nothing. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.